han vivido enseguida. Ahí ya, ¿eh?
<laughs> Hola from beautiful and sunny Spain. Welcome everyone to Motorland for the second lecture of the Red Bull Motor Boost. We're extremely excited to have you all here gathered in one place. So thank you all so much for coming. I'm Dominika Grenova, or Dominika Rides on social media, a passionate rider and the host of the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. So it's time to introduce you to our guest. The first guest would be Daniel Urquizu, Managing Director at Moto Student. Hello, Daniel. Hi, Dominika. How are you? Take a seat. Good, good. Good. I'm here. So then we have Roma Lopez, technical organization and sportive support to the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup. Hola, Hi. Roma. Hi, Dominika. How are you doing? Que tal? Bien. <laughs> so then Alberto Tambini, structural analysis and test engineer at KTM. Ex-team member of Italia Motor Student Team. Hi, Dominica. Hello, Alberto. <laughs> and then we have Jeremy Mark Williams, ex-MotoGP rider and test development rider for KTM Motorcycles. And he also played the Batman in the amazing movie, one of my favorite movies, Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> so, hello, Jeremy. Hi, how are you? Very well. Good. So, perfect. And now it's time for me to sit as well. Okay. So, Red Bull Motor Boost is an additional challenge inside the Motor Student Competition. This year, it's an individual prize. One lucky student will win an amazing opportunity. Six months internship at the Moto3 KTM in Austria. And you can choose from two different topics, aerodynamics, or mechanical design. So this project and this lecture is an amazing opportunity for all of you to give a boost to your future careers. So if you haven't registered yet, now is the perfect time. Don't worry, you still have time because the deadline is on the 25th of July. All you have to do is upload your cover template to the Moto Student website in the Moto Boost section by 25th of July. So now it's time to have a conversation with our guest, talking about topics that for sure will be extremely interesting for you and will help you with your project and give you the last puzzle pieces before the final step of this competition. So towards the end of this lecture, I promise all of you will have 30 minutes with our guest. So start preparing your questions and we're gonna do a Q&A with you guys. So are we ready to start? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so the first question would be to Daniel. Okay. Just, uh, Dominica, <laughs> just give me one second. Um, with the permission from all the audience, now that we're all sitting down here with the social distance in here, I think uh, if you want, we can just relax. Just let us for 60 minutes to relax from the max. Probably if you see our smiles, it will be a lot better lecture. So please... If you want to follow me, we are lacking issues, but we are going to keep the social distance, and with it, you can now start Thank with the Thank you so much, Daniel. That feels a lot better. <laughs> Thank you, you, Dominica. So, four continents, 16 countries, 83 teams, and more than 1,000 students. Let's talk about Genesis, the origin. The reason why we all hear Moto Student. How did this idea came, Daniel? Oh. The origin of any idea is uh, something is complex. Many people say that the ideas they normally come from a workshop or from a, a tissue from a restaurant, is what the, you know, in California, that's what it says. But in here, where we, where we exactly did it, it's uh, 12 years ago. We look at the university, uh, we look at this astonishing project, Motorland, and we thought, how we can mix up in the same, like in the cocktails from Red Bull, how we can mix up <laughs> the university, motorsport, and also how we can miss up all this passion for the sports and innovation, technology. And uh, just one word came up to our mind. It was Motor Student. Motor Student, what it represents is the real university, is the real bridge in between uh, the university, what you're doing in your lectures at the university. And obviously, you are always working with a computer. But in here, you're working now with a real motorbike, similar to this one. 
on this astonishing motor land track. The idea where they came from, we just listen to the people and we just give them to them what they deserve. Amazing. So as you said, this represents the best way to touch motorsport, no? And yes. what about being in the world of motorsport? Is there any other way to get into motorsport? Any bridge? Yeah, probably many ways to reach the ceiling and to touch the sky. Uh, Moto student is one of them, and uh, Alberto Tambini here will let us know later <laughs> how he can touch the sky. <laughs> Roma, I, I'm sure that you, in, uh, if you were younger, you would just say, hey, Danny, can I go Moto student? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but now, we are not that old. We're just a bit older than them. A bit older. But yes, there is one single way now. And it's in here, it's uh, Moto Boost. Moto Boost is right now the only bridge in between university, motor student, and the real motorsport world. If you're gonna be one day over there, working with the best guys like Roma or Alberto, or maybe just uh, doing some testing with uh, Jeremy, Moto Boost is the only way right now, the bridge that joins motor student and the real motorsport world. Definitely the bridge to the motorsport industry. So Alberto, now it's your time. Ready. As an ex-team member of Unibo Motorsport Motor Student Team that participated in the previous edition of the Motor Student Competition. Can you tell us how was this experience for you? How important is this lecture for our students? So, it was really a beautiful experience. An experience of hard work, passion, motivation, an experience that really helped me to develop as a person, working with other guys, sharing experience, sharing passion, and also helped me for sure to develop technical skills that were needed for the job that I was now doing. Because when you go in such a project, you have to think out of the box, you need to find solution, nothing is written on the paper, so I think it's the best if you want to end up in motorsport in your career. This is a good way. And a lecture like this, if I would have been you know, in the previous edition, in front of the stage, I would have been extremely curious to just know the point of view of experts. And, and yeah. now you are the expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the beginning, yeah. Well, you guys definitely can be sitting in his chair <laughs> maybe next year. So definitely need to apply to the Moto Boost competition. And Alberto, can you tell us what are the considerations when you start designing a bike from zero? So this is a topic that I think many of you already <laughs> experienced. As, yeah, as are some hints. So we have to start. We have to... Uh, developed a bike from zero. We have to race in a certain class. Okay, so first thing I will think about is have a look to the competitor because this will be our first reference. We, we need to start to define the geometry of the bike. So let's think simple. Let's put the bike on the paper. 2D layout. Okay, we can e define the 2D layout of our bike taking some dimension watching the competitors, but not all, this, all of these dimensions for sure will be the correct ones that will give us the best performance. So one important point is to have, to keep in consideration the possibility to adjust the geometry of the bike from the beginning. For the early test, for the first test you will do, you need to be able to react, react fast, adjust the geometry. So put as many adjustable as possible for the first layout of your bike. So I'm talking about possibility to change the steering angle, the triple clamp offset, pivot position. And another important point for the bike would be for sure to think about ergonomy as soon as you go in the track with the rider. A rider that feels comfortable on the bike is a rider that goes fast. So think about the possibility to adjust the ergonomy, for example, like footrest position, seat position, handlebar position. And then, once defined the layout of the bike, it's time to think about the main structural parts, like frame, engine, swing arm. So this will be the first approach, the first thing to think, and let's say make a program to define them to start from zero. Thank you, Alberto. So Roma, 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> That, that, that was an impressive answer. <laughs> I mean, I will try to keep up on your level. <laughs> but it was not that easy. Well, Roma, this is an interactive process, isn't it? So once we get the design, how do we follow the script? And which alternatives do we have in first plan? So it does not work as expected. Well, Alberto already mentioned that from the project they have, we need some spare room for adjustments. Everything that they calculate, once we bring it to the truck, it's, it might not be working that good as we expected. And there are many factors to take into account. So later on, we'll talk about the rider, which is a main a stone on that part of the project. Don't worry, Jeremy, your turn will come. Yeah, for sure it will come. <laughs> but it's more about having fast time on reaction. Like if plan A that we have designed it doesn't work, which options do we have to follow? or which, which plans or alternative plans we can follow to overcome that part of the process where everything was not working as expected. So Alberto, once it's all in place and we have the puzzle pieces, which designing line you follow and which are the main points to take into account? So let's say we have the, our bike on the paper. We need to go on, we need to define, for example, how, which structural parts I want and how I produce them. So let's talking about frame, swinger, as I said before. We need to think about the technology. So which technology I want to use for this part, for example. Uh, a tip that I will give you is you need to think that you will always have to react because on the track, through the comments and the feedback of the rider, you will get some information on how to improve the bike because nothing will work completely as expected. So you need to choose a technology that allows you to produce parts in a controlled way, that allows you to produce parts that have low weight, are safe, and that fulfill the stiffness targets that you want. Let's say at this stage, talking as a structural analysis for sure, uh, FEM calculation, FEM calculation can help you to do some iteration and already have a look which is the best choice for the material and also for the technology because every technology has constraints and advantages that can affect the performance that you will get on this part and at the end, the performance of the bike. But designing isn't only about drawing. It is also hours and hours of cal calculation, decision. Am I right? Yes. So let's talk about, thank you. <laughs> let's talk about FEM. Thinking of you, student, in front of FEM software at the early stages of the project. What would you suggest as a starting point for the definition of the geometry and main structural points, parts, sorry. Okay, so yeah, if I put myself in a student in front of the FEM for the first time, and I have like to design a new frame for my bike, ah, the first frame for my bike, and I had to start somewhere. So let's say, we, I think we all know that every structural part at the end will fulfill some stiffness target because the stiffness of structural part affects the behavior of the bike on the track. So where to start? Let's say we cannot extract a stiffness target from the competitors because we cannot see numbers on the competitor. But what we, we can see is the geometry. We can have a look to the layout of the structural part. And here, for example, um, in FEM, we can use uh, optimization methods that are already inside the software in order to achieve this. Uh, my suggestion is, for example, to run optimizations, uh, setting as input some stiffness targets, and see the geometry of the result. If the geometry of the result then is following the shape of the competitor, this means that probably our stiffest, stiffness targets are close or at least in the same direction of the competitors. And this is a good hint to start developing a new bike. So having a look to the competitors, let's, use, let's be smart, use the technology that we can use in terms of software and mathematical algorithm in order to achieve the performance. But wait, wait, Alberto. It seems like we have plenty of time. Or we don't. Well, let's talk about deadlines, Roma. <laughs> the most important points to consider when starting a design process and next steps such as validation, 
which points do we have to set reference points to comply with timing and get what you need as expect? Well, there are, um, there are three factors that we should take into account when, when designing or when waiting for some design to come. Mainly, it will be the rule book of the championship we are competing, which at the end is defining the way or the limits we have to follow. Then will be the budget. Budget is not limitless, so, so we, stay, we have to stay within. And then will be terms. I mean, we don't have that, that many months, we don't have a year. I mean, we are constantly evolving, but if you come from zero, you have to react at short terms normally. If you're talking about short terms, you will focus on your strength and increasing your strength. If you have a long-term period, then you will try to get as many points as possible to do a, a standard package that works, that properly works from the beginning. Thank you, Roma. So, Jeremy, you're a heart. Uh, sorry, you're a rider in your heart and a very experienced racer. Can you describe us, please, how is it to be working as a test developing for KTM? Well, following on from what Alberto and Roma pointed out, you know, they're talking specifically more about racing development. I work for street product. Even though my background has been racing, I moved to the street R&D department uh, during uh, really when we started to produce the very first Super Duke, the bike that Danny arrived on today. So. I've been working on that bike from the very first edition right so away. So the bike through. that Danny wrote, you were working on it? Yeah, I helped develop, and I mean by develop, everything from what Alberto was talking about, from ergonomic triangle to uh, right through to, I mean, geometry. Obviously, we tried every, every single aspect on geometry before we get to the final uh, the product. We, we, we go through a series, which is called P0, P1, P2, P3, which are all prototype bikes. And by P1 to P2, we have already defined the geometry and the stiffness values. And then uh, the bike starts to uh, become more like a, a finished uh, bike for the road. And at the very, very end of the, this process, we then add in traction control, all of the electronic aids, cornering ABS, wheelie control, all of those things I also am in, heavily involved with. So. You definitely did a fantastic job because uh, it's one of my favorite motorcycles. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, we, at the beginning, we kind of got a bad reputation for it because it was, you know, it was known as the beast. But actually, it's, it can be also a, a, quiet beast. a quiet beast. It can be a, yeah, <laughs> like a lamb in lion's clothing. But it's a, it's a lot of fun to ride the motorcycle. It's a lot of fun to develop with the R&D department. And I think a lot of you students out here today you know, we need more students like yourselves, more engineers like yourself, obviously to come into manufacturing, whether it's with whatever manufacturer, our R&D department grows so quickly that we can't keep up to demand. So there's always opportunities. Don't just always think about the racing avenue. There's, there's, a, there's a big future ahead in, in certainly with street, their street products as well. But engineers, calculation, hypothesis, data, something is missing here. I would say the missing link is the rider. As a test developing rider, which would be the main points you will focus on working? Do you follow the plans as Roma said? Yes, we're, we're kind of, uh, when we, we have a, a, a project starting with the budget set out, there's a, there's a timeline obviously. Uh, we need to reach certain targets by certain times and it's, um, so, there's, so there's a lot of pressure on everybody in the team, right from the PM, the project manager, through to the engineers, to the electronic engineers, right down to the test rider to make sure that the test rider is driving the project in the correct way. So your reputation kind of is, uh, is hanging on, on this direction. And of course you need to have a very close relationship and a very trusting relationship with the team around you. We have a very, very close relationship in KTM. I work with different departments, everything from wheels and brakes to chassis design analysis, uh, 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 suspension, WP suspension, Bosch uh, electronics, et cetera, et cetera. The, 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 the list is, is never ending. So it's, uh, it, it really, as, as Alberto pointed out, is exactly as, as they start with a, a, a track project, we do exactly the same for the road. 
Okay, so how did you see the product today? I saw that you test write some of the prototypes. Did anything yeah. catch your eye? Did something impress you? I think many things caught my eye. It was a pleasure <laughs> and thank you for letting me have the opportunity to ride your bikes today and trusting me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, guys. Uh, it's been I, a great day. I, yeah, it was fantastic. I mean, even a, a little bit about what we spoke about after riding the bike is kind of what, how we work as a team, you know, kind of suggesting and uh, pointing out areas that, that, that maybe could be improved on. Hopefully some of you guys got some of that feedback today. I, I don't think that you need to change very much because the bikes were really amazing and the engineering mm -hmm. level this year has gone way beyond what we expected. It's fantastic. Fantastic job, guys. Well done. <laughs> but Roma, are they linked to first phases from Alberto? I mean, how do you start planning a test day? Is it also like engineering plan in terms of steps? As you said, it's just a plan. I mean, before a test, you are trying to plan as much as possible. What do we want to test? How do we want to do it? How many stints? How many labs? Which tires? Use it? I mean, new ones. I mean, there are plenty of things to take into account. But at the end, once again, we have to face with reality. And reality, we just have it when you are on the track. You might have planned a super busy scheduled day, but then because of the forecast, it's not allowing you to ride on the way you expect it. You cannot do it, and there is nothing you can do on that on forecast. So at the end, it's about making the most out of time you have. Mm -hmm. If you have conditions like today, like perfect conditions, sun is shining, it too hot today? not so windy. <laughs> Well, but would be a good <laughs> Jeremy, wasn't it too hot in the leathers? <laughs> it was pretty hot, but yeah. It, uh, it, it, it certainly was hot, but it was worth, it was worth <laughs> losing a little bit of sweat today to, to ride some of your products. Well, yeah, that's why we have Red Bull to stay hydrated, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> and give us the energy and the boost. <laughs> yeah, but that was all about, I mean, if you have uh, rain conditions, it's like making the most out of the rain conditions. Whatever the conditions you got, just go for it and make the most. That, that would be the key point, I guess. Perfect. Well, Jeremy, set up. What a simple world, isn't it? Mm. Uh, what a difficult <laughs> mixture. <laughs> How do you make, link, listen, and talk about bike setup, behavior, stiffness, and frame, and so? How do you translate the information from the bike to the engineers? And how do you connect with telemetry and data accusation? Do you have like a special language that you speak with your engineers? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like yeah. special sign language. You, you, you know the language. You see them on TV in MotoGP when he's <laughs> when, when they, they they're making this this sign or 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 this. is doing this. Uh, it's it, there's no there's no magic that you yeah. into a dialogue. Huh? There's kind of no words for a lot of it, and uh, <laughs> setup is two very short words for a. I mean, a very very long list of what what needs to. That what would you require to make mm -hmm. the, the, the correct setup? Uh, I could sit here all night and talk to you about this. It's, it's so interesting from my perspective because everything that I get to try out, I have to feed back the information to the engineers. And if it's a chassis technician like Alberto and I say, I, I, I have to be nice about how I say I don't like the chassis. I can't tell them I don't like the chassis. I you have to, to tell say them, it in a gentle way. Yeah. I have to tell them what it is that I think we can improve on the chassis. So I get to try uh, lots of different stiffnesses. We, we have different ways of adding material to the bike through the first development phase. And this, this first development phase for our street products is called P0, prototype zero. And then it goes to prototype 0 0.5 and then it goes to one, and we can only move as fast as they can produce the, the products to add to the motorcycle. So it's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, in the beginning, quite a complicated process, but we can get there because we've got a, a team of people who are so passionate about moving forward. We can never move backwards. We're never, we can't bring a new motorcycle to the market that doesn't already beat our reference bike, our 890R or our 1290 Super Duke or our 390 Adventure, whatever that bike might, might be. So there's a lot of time and effort that goes into this an analysis that these guys do before we get it. Then we tell them it's not very good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it might have to go back for some tweaks. 
and then it comes back again. And it's a little bit like the race team and the rider, yeah. mm-hmm. Roma. It's the same. It's kind of the same process. It's just that when I'm produce, helping to produce a street bike, there's a there's an awful lot more to it that have to reach um, certain regulations. That you know, the, the latest one being Euro Five and how we get around the the Euro Five issues. But it's it's a it's a fantastic minefield that you guys would love to be involved in, particularly coming from what you're doing here with Moto Student. So it's not about telling what is bad to the engineer. It's about <laughs> trying to find a plan B that yeah, we can make exactly, it, yeah. we can make it happen. It's about how to get around that without upsetting anybody. But yeah, you have to have a real trust in your engineers, and vice versa. The engineers have got to have a real trust in their test team, their test riders. We have a very small test team. Uh, maybe only of five test riders in the whole, for the whole of KTM, for all of KTM products. And we've got one or two also in America for mm-hmm. off-road stuff. But the main, uh, the, the, the main team of, of test riders is a very small team. So we're getting to try and test everything. So I guess because of that, and we're riding all of the time, we can give feedback, you know, relevant feedback. Uh, and it, it's, it, it always has to be in a way that we know we can move forward and improve from the bike that we're trying to replace or, or uh, develop side by side. So as Jeremy said, guys, it's all about teamwork. So, and you also have lots of teams here, so you're starting the right way, learning how to work in a team. So raising um, my hand, would you agree that it's as important <laughs> to have a good plan development as having a good relation within the team? Because I guess that sometimes giving so much information to the rider is nothing positive, but sometimes it's not about testing blind. It's about having a good compromise and a good relation, a trust relation, that the technician is trustworthy with the rider and the rider so on. So it's more about creating a good atmosphere, as mm-hmm. Jeremy said, yeah. that everything that, that's happening, you lead it together. Mm-hmm. But how about at the Red Bull MotoGP Rookies Cup when you have 26 riders on a test day? How does that end up? <laughs> <laughs> chaos. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there is always chaos. No, I, in fact, in our Rookies Cup, we are trying to, f- to find the, not the perfect setup for everyone because it would be impossible, but trying to find a base setup that works for everyone. Mm-hmm. At the end, you have 26 riders. You have to fulfill everyone's necessities. So you're trying to find, as I said, a base setup, and you are just adapting, doing small changes track from track to track mm-hmm. to, to make a bike that runs smooth for them. Mm-hmm. But the targets are not that clear or not that precise than in a test team, a street team, or in a racing, MotoGP racing team. Mm-hmm. Well, Alberto, <laughs> how do you process all these information that you get from the test rider? So... I would say, going a bit back to what Jeremy said, it's important to plan the test day, especially if you are at the beginning, let's say the first test of the bike, you need to, you still don't know, you don't, it's still don't, not 100% clear for you which stiffness affects which maneuver and how, and which is the weight of every stiffness. So you need to uh, be able to be ready to understand the feedback of the rider. So. A suggestion would be, you know, to have like, uh, let's think about a frame, a frame with the possibility to add or remove part, to see the effect on track, to get the feedback from the rider and extract from this feedback the stiffness information that as an engineer I want. Or I can bring maybe two frames that have really different stiffness targets. And from the feedback of the rider, then I will understand which stiffness affect which maneuver. So this is also an important point, to be ready and to prepare yourself in order to understand what the rider gives you. Thank you, Alberto. Well, Jeremy, perfect lap on simulation with perfect lap on the track. How do you see the simulation evolution and the human factor? Will this substitute one day the human experience? What is the expectations versus reality? Uh, that was, that's a question that we discussed earlier on. I think that's a very difficult question to answer. Yes, we never know where evolution is going to take us. We don't know how simulation processes might improve, particularly for two wheels, because at the moment they're pretty good for four wheels. But because of the rider's input and the rider's style, he's not just sitting in one place. He's, he's 
moving himself all around the motorcycle all of the time. We have different height riders, uh, so, so weight bias is quite different. Uh, the styles, as I say, are quite different. I don't really see that, I might be wrong, but I don't really see that the simulation process is going to aid us a lot in terms of adding a rider to a motorcycle. For sure, maybe a riderless motorcycle with, uh, in a simulation process, we may be able, able in the future to improve on that, but I don't know, Roma, you, what's your view on simulation? Well, v, v reality? <laughs> <laughs> I think that you were right on the point that right there nowadays has so much effect on the bike, on the bike and the aerodynamics happening and the motion on, the, on its own. So might be wrong as well, but I don't see happening at least soon. Because at the end, as we told before, I mean, perfection, it doesn't exist. When they are simulating, they are simulating on quite perfect conditions. Safe world. <laughs> yeah, in quite perfect conditions, which normally doesn't happen. <laughs> Just because the week before there were cars on track and the rubber is different than, than the one you were expecting. Just because there are so many factors uh, happening that you can control. Things are changing day by day. So I, I don't think it's happening soon. Uh, just to pick up on one point from the chassis side, and Alberto can back me up on this, but what we find is that if we give good feedback, really relative feedback to a chassis during the first process, and there's some aspect that can be improved upon, when they start to analyze and simulate, they, they, they have a very good process, and I, I, I'm not privy to it. I don't get to see this process. Maybe Alberto can tell us more about it, but if I send a <laughs> chassis back, somehow they send the next one back and it's actually very, very good. So depending on the feedback from the rider, talking to the engineer, they go back and scratch their heads a little bit for two or three weeks, and the next stage seems to be a big uh, improvement. That's, that's how our department works. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I mean, depends on the, for sure, when, how much, uh, which is the comment of the rider, how much is the step to improve? I mean, maybe if you go for sure on, with the first bike on the track, with the first frame, and then you get some feedback, and you understand that you have to completely change the behavior, then maybe, okay, it's easier to get the direction, but of course, you know, when you are at a high level, like MotoGP or Moto3, when you are so close, to the limit that you need to really make really small steps in order to improve the performance, then there is not always like this. So not always um, um, an update on the frame, on the swing arm is improving the performance. Maybe you do one step back and you get another comment and then you understand, okay, so I need to move not in this direction but in this other direction. So as the level increase, as more difficult it is to mm -hmm. really do the step always in the correct direction. Mm -hmm. And it's not just always chassis and swinging arm. We always test wheel stiffnesses now, which is not something we did in the past. Now we're checking that we're in the, in the right area for wheel stiffness. So once the, the chassis has, is working with a wheel that we know that works, if we change the wheel to a different manufacturer or a different design, different spoke design, then we also have to check the wheel, that the wheel works and doesn't change the behavior of the motorcycle. So, as I say, there's a, a huge amount of areas that need to be defined. But Jeremy, when you were racing, was it in the late 90s, early 2000s at the MotoGP? Yeah. Did you prefer it more when there was less technology involved? <laughs> well, I mean, yes, <laughs> I think that's... Uh, I, I, a lot more came down to the rider you know, particularly on 250 and 500 cc v4s uh, the, a lot of that was left in the riders hands because we weren't using traction control you know, we weren't uh, we, we weren't looking at data really closely we were looking at maximum rpms you know a little bit like you do in the rookies <laughs> cup you know okay uh, it's we're, we're we're on the limiter at such and such and maybe we're changing springs but everything was defined by what the rider's preference was at that time rather than looking at the data and the data engineer telling me, well, you're too deep <laughs> in, in this corner and, you're, and you're not, you haven't used enough stroke in this corner. So, yeah, I think that back then, you know, the days were, of, I think pure 250cc GP was probably the best form of racing, I think, that, that I can remember. Certainly, it's, of course, it's in my time, so I'm going to say that, but 
it was very, very pure and uh, probably, you know, part to weight, nearly absolutely perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, Daniel, how did you see our students today? Is there anything you would like to share with us? before the final step, the final event, the race this weekend that you guys have. Yes, um, um, but uh, I mean, after listening to you guys, I was just thinking as managing director, you know, I'm always thinking how to manage things. We go rider, we go also engineers, we go someone, so okay, one, two, three, four, five. We just need to probably more guys, um, probably Christina and Sila could also help us, and then we'll be seven. Do you agree to be also a motor student for next edition? We can make a team. We just need to go to university, go enroll in there. But do we do electric or petrol? Um, Jeremy, what do you think? <laughs> it's a hard decision. It's, huh? a, it's a hard one. <laughs> Today you told me. This, huh? this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a topic that uh, we discuss a lot. <laughs> Actually, I was really, really blown away by the level of the electric technology here today. Absolutely, completely, wow. Well done, guys. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. So I guess that uh, old school petrol head <laughs> is going to have to some point come over to new technology electric head um, because it was so good. Yeah, so I think mm -hmm. in terms of KTM, we're not uh, producing that, those, that, that level of, of technology just yet. We're using smaller, lower voltages than you guys are using here today. But it's certainly something that... Uh, is a big consideration yeah. for the future. So you it's choose good. electric? I think I I will get shot by my management if I said it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's the one on the bike. I, so yeah. we so go for electric. It's a secret. We go for electric. Hear anything? <laughs> Honestly, both from both sides, uh, both were so impressive on, on petrol and electric today that mm -hmm. I was kind of really impressed by both, uh, you know, from the technology on both sides. And actually mm -hmm. the lap time, the speeds on the back straight, when they're so close now to electric and, and fuel, you yeah. know, petrol engines, mm -hmm. that's really something else. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, well done to your guys for getting it this far. So I think we're going to get uh, big problems if we go on motor steering and against these guys because what we saw today, the, the bikes we saw on uh, petrol or electric, I mean, the level is uh, higher. So high. I've been 12 years on this, and when we started with the universities in there, it was just only 21 universities. Right now, we are 83 universities, which is 400% increase. Yeah. Incredible. And the level, I think, uh, Jeremy, will you agree with me, is thousand, or thousand yeah, times. Yeah. I mean, really, it's from it's last really time you came off. in here yeah. mm -hmm. till now, you told me before. I mean, yeah. Danny, the level is... It's only three high. years ago, but it's yeah. such a mm -hmm. big improvement. So, yeah, I mean, they've done a really good job. So, uh, mm -hmm. I think they deserve... Uh, Okay, we'll go to motor steering some other time, okay? Right now, we yes. just relax. <laughs> we just yeah, Roma, we'll leave, we'll leave it by the time. For easy one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeremy, but immediate future, motor student, as it said, think fast and race smarter. You are all one step closer before sitting next to Alberto's chair. <laughs> this is real, this is happening. So, Jeremy, how are students can accelerate their career? Would you say Motorboost is the best way to get their wings into the motorsport industry? Well, we've come, come here, you know, uh, through a very difficult time, uh, giving you guys a little bit more time to think about what you're, you're doing and your futures. This is a, fan a fantastic initiative uh, from Red Bull and Motorboost and KTM. I think we need to have more students coming into our our factory because uh, we desperately need very young talented engineers and you've come here you know all ready to race so you've, you're part of the KTM DNA already and uh, for sure we need to open up the doors a little bit more to to engineers like this I totally yes. agree you agree well, good. Fact, yes do you agree in fact, there's a first year guy coming who's my first year this this current season I saw some ideas that they were just mind-blowing I mean I don't. I haven't even thought about that. So it was like yesterday and today was quite impressive to see how the level it was and following Danny and Jeremy, how to know uh, how the level has improved in the previous season. So it's the the, the work they're doing is just almost magic. So Jeremy, yeah. you think mm -hmm. um, as you say in uh, KTM, these guys are like ready to go to KTM. Ready to race? Well, they're, they're already ready to they're already ready to race, so they they ready they, to go to KTM. They've already got the orange. You just need to give me a target. How many <laughs> yeah. you need? 
Yeah, I think for sure, even in R and D and marketing and motorsport, there there has to be openings for for engineers, young engineers like this in the future. So this is the bridge. This is the bridge between the first, students, certainly the first and part. motorsport industry. Absolutely. Okay. Well, well done, really, the Moto Boost. I really hope to see you guys at the MotoGP. <laughs> so Alberto. As a student, you've been here before, you have all the students in front of you. Could you please give them your best advice for this weekend and in general for the competition? So, yeah, I, for the weekend, especially thinking about the race, we will have, I think, if Daniel confirms, you saw the weather forecast will be pretty warm, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, warm, hot. Uh, I think it's going to be really hot. I think yeah. Jeremy today was sweating quite a lot, so yeah. it's going to be a nice uh, sauna. You <laughs> well, know? Yeah. cool your engines then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Take care of the cooling of the engine, both in petrol and electric category. It's a really important point. Think a lot about reliability of the bikes. You need to finish the race is really important to finish the race and get the points. It's better than not finish the race. So mm -hmm. this is my best advice for the weekend. I think also Jeremy and the other test riders gave you a lot of advice on the setup and how to improve the performance of your bike. So yeah, now is everything on you. <laughs> Just continue. You are almost at the end of your, of your trip. And yeah, you, you put a lot of passion, motivation, hard work, and now you have to just push until the end. Just push a bit more. Not too hard. <laughs> <laughs> just stay upright. As, as he said, just stay upright. It's, <laughs> uh, to finish first, first you must finish. That's always been my motto, you know, and I was the worst at it. I, I, I crashed way too many times in my early career. But I learned this as time went on to finish first. First, you've got to finish. So get to the end. Pace yourself against your other competitors. Don't try and leave town. Try to stay in the, in the same group. Look at what they're doing. Look at their comp your competition. Gauge your speeds and your, even your power performance on the e-bikes, depending on the competitors. Well, guys, as I mentioned earlier, the Red Bull Motor Boost no, is a competition. I would like to add mm. one more thing. Yes, sure. And it was <laughs> like, from what I see this year, mm -hmm. I repeat that it's my first year, even though they don't win, even though they don't succeed on Motor Boost, to keep going. If you have an idea, just go for it. Doesn't matter whatever they say, doesn't matter how difficult it is, but the key point is to keep going. If you believe in something, just go for it. Exactly. That, that was no matter how many times you fell down, you always stand up <laughs> and keep going. Uncountable. <laughs> Uncountable. <laughs> exactly. But it, I think that it's pretty good that if you have a, an idea or are on a goal, and if your, if your target is to be a test uh, technician or to be developing with Jeremy, just keep going because there are many, many ways. Moto Boost is one yes. of the best ones, mm -hmm. but there will be other paths bringing mm -hmm. you to MotoGP or Motorsport World. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roma. Well, guys, as I mentioned earlier, the Red Bull Motor Boost is an additional competition inside the Motor Student Competition. So if you haven't registered, there is still time. You have to be officially registered. You can go on the Motor Student website. The deadline is on the 25th of July. All you have to do is submit your cover template to the Motor Student website at the Motor Boost section. And then you'll have time until 15 of October, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, to develop your project. Yeah, and the true. winning prize, it's an incredible prize. So if I was in your position, I would be extremely excited because it's a six months internship with Moto3 KTM in Austria, an individual prize for one student. And you get the chance to choose between aerodynamic topic or mechanical design. That's it? Yeah. That's true. It's well, a real, it's thank, a real bridge thank you Red Bull and KTM for Bull this. KTM. That's, that's you are making it. Incredible. And now it's time for you guys. It's your time to do the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please, who has the microphone can start. Yes? <laughs> well, can you please tell us your name and your university? Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Camilo. I am from the Basque College of Engineering. I'm from Vitoria, Basque country. Wow. Ah, vale. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, you just said that the project that you have to develop is it has to be about aerodynamics, either hydrodynamics or mechanical design. No, that will be the winning prize. So oh. when you win, you can choose from two different topics. Also, the, the mm -hmm. project that I present like for to enter the competition can be like about anything. Uh, maybe Daniel is the no, uh, right person a, to answer I that. I am in electronics and I, I work with the battery management and okay. circuits and mm -hmm. data logging. No, nothing to do with aerodynamics or mechanical design. So, Could he get the chance to Yeah, you can also get a chance. I mean, mm -hmm. in my case, I'm an aerospace engineer. I've been in Formula One and now I'm managing here in competition. So that it doesn't matter what you do. What it means, uh, what it matters really matters what you do, what you know. Uh, the two topics are mechanical and, and aero. I was aerospace engineer, but I was doing telemetry with uh, Formula One tires, so mm -hmm. that it, you are capable to do it. You can go either to mechanical, there is an issue in there, you can just go and check it. If you feel free for there to go, if not, you can go to aero. There's also another one issue, and then you can try also to solve uh, this, just two of them. And this is why we did one lecture with aerodynamics, and this is why today we have the lecture with mechanical to give you the tips to get on Motor Boost and try to get the best project. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Daniel. OK, welcome. So who has the next question? <laughs> you can raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so if you can tell us, please, your name, your yeah. university, and Hi. the question to who would you like to ask. Hi, my name is Data, and I'm from the University of Sapiens of Rome. My team name is Sapiens of Gladius Racing Team. It's a petrol team. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this question is for everyone, the engineers, and the Mr. Jeremy, the rider also. So we've been talking about the electric and the petrol heads and petrol engines getting obsolete very soon enough. Uh, I know it's a little bit off bit, but uh, what do you think? What do you guys think about the synthetic fuels coming into the racing and also into the street culture? And do you think we can save the internal combustions? Maybe let's say after 10 years or something. That's I'm a fantastic question. Yeah, ab absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, great, that's, great that's one. Well yeah. done. That's that's exactly what we're all thinking. You know, we just haven't said it, but. I know that uh, Porsche technology are looking very closely at synthetic fuels at the moment, and we're kind of waiting for those, those market leaders in that technology to, for it to filter down. Uh, we, we, want, we don't want to see the demise of petrol engines, obviously. We're developing bikes. The bikes that I'm working on at the moment are ready for 2025 and 26. So we, we, hope, we really hope that, that that technology can be used quite soon with, uh, with uh, two wheels also. Just two wheels or not just for the road vehicles. Uh, what about the racing segment also? I mean, like, can, can that be really a performance fuel type? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> at the end, it in, is a matter of uh, fixing the class. So if you fix a class in which everybody race with the same, following the same rules, in this case, the rules can be related to the fuel and the kind of engine, then uh, everything will be like now. Yeah, we go back to the rule book. Yeah. If the rule book says that we have to go on synthetic fuels, mm -hmm. for sure the brands will work like crazy, hours and hours, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably be just as competitive you know, with, in a short period of time. If you look at the history of manufacturers, every time that they've been given a, a restriction or any kind of penalty in terms of capacity or uh, fuel volume that they're allowed to carry, they still in no time start to beat the lap times that they were achieving the year before, so it won't take long. Yeah, it's competitive or even more, as you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we Thank you. Hope, we just hope uh, we save the internal combustions. Yeah. Thank you, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so everybody. much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So who has the next question then? Come on, guys, don't be shy. <laughs> <coughs> No? Yes, we have and one, we have one yeah, over all the there. way in the back. <laughs> and also, you can also ask questions regarding your project. Hello, yes. my name is mm -hmm. Mike. I'm from University of La Rioja here in Spain. And I have a question about the administration of the project. Because the last uh, 20th of January, uh, sorry, of June, I sent the the PDF file with, the, with my presentation to the project. Uh, I uploaded it in the link 
you give to us. But I, uh, um, any kind of feedback has been sent to me. So I don't know what to do or how to confirm that my document has been successfully uploaded. Daniel? <laughs> I was dragging my nerves and luckily it goes to Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the right Why? person to answer Why? that. <laughs> Um, trust me, it did reach because I normally read everything that comes to Moto Student. And we saw plenty of um, already projects coming in from many of you. We want to get a lot more. Uh, this is why we got extension until 25th of July. But uh, trust me, yeah, it did come. We are going to give you feedback soon, but this is why we extended the date. So once we go close down the date, we give you all of you the same feedback. Shall I repeat the no 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 it's, loading or it's already in there. Don't worry. We just go everything in case this any problem. If you're gonna repeat, uh, doing it, but yeah. you don't get double. I mean, <laughs> you just get <laughs> the same opportunity. Okay. okay. You know? <laughs> but just to make sure and feel more calm, maybe you just do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. So, anybody else would like to ask a question? Yes. So if you can tell us your name and your university. Hello, I'm Kuba Sieczka from uh, Wrocław Univers University of Science and Technology. And my question is, when KTM made the first sports electric bike? Hmm. Oh, Jeremy? Uh, I, I mean, they, they've... <laughs> a million plans yeah. for the future. <laughs> uh, they've, they've been there with the MX bike already. Is that the free ride? Yeah, they've yes. done the free mm -hmm. ride and mm -hmm. also saw an MX version. But they, the next installment will be smaller uh, bikes for kids. And uh, you know, there's, there's, there's something happening around that. But as far as outside of that goes, I'm really not sure. Have you any ideas? I have no <laughs> updates. No, I, uh, no updates, I'm sorry. <laughs> so we need students from the electric side in the KTM, <laughs> and yeah. then we'll have more updates. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> when you want to do that, just call to us. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> we have a deal okay. here. <laughs> Thanks, that's what it was. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So, anybody else would like to ask a question? Yeah, can I go for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you must be starving. You've been riding on the track all day, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty hungry, actually. And the, the Red Bull's going to my head. <laughs> Well, I have a question towards you guys. I would like to know, if you raise your hand, who submit to the Red Bull Motor Boost competition? How many of you? You can raise your One, hand. One, two, three. I'm yeah. sure there might be more. Yeah. Yes. We're yeah. expecting more. The guy yes. from La Rioja didn't rise up down the hand. Yeah, or I think he needs to submit How many you are again. expecting yeah, to the, do? The, the prize deserves more, more people, <laughs> more credit. Absolutely. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Well, well done and thank you so much for this. And the ones that they didn't submit, there's still time until the 25th of July. And uh, how about you guys? Oh. Is there anything well, you would actually, like to I share? I don't believe that there are no questions because today we have been under <laughs> questions, <laughs> questions, questions, so for sure. They ask can, all the questions yeah, while you so were in for the sure boxes. Someone can <laughs> still squeeze the head and do some <laughs> tricky question. It's, it's just the right time yes. before dinner, so... I've got no more answers left. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, on behalf of Red Bull Motor Student and our two main partners, KTM and Red Bull Motor HP Rukiska, we would all like to thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Daniel, Alberto, Jeremy, Roma. It thank was you, amazing you to have you here as guest and learn new things. <laughs> And we're so pleased to be able to give extra motivation to students from all around the world. We give you wings and we boost your future career for in the most important thing to get into the motorcycle industry. We're looking forward to see you all in action. We wish you all the best luck for the Moto Student Competition and also for the Red Bull Moto Boost. And well, see you soon. See you tomorrow. Good luck, guys. Yes. Good, luck. Good, luck. Good, luck. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> so, guys, we go back.
Let me show you something.